So uh, with that, I will pass it on to Dominique Stevenson, who uh, is here all the way from Baltimore. Uh, she has, is advocating for Eddie Conway, and she has also co-edited uh, his book, uh, Martial Law. And without further ado, I'll pass it on to Dominique. When you heard about the Eddie, Eddie Conway case, like what made you like feel like, okay, I need to get in involved with this? I think, like I said, I had known him and known of the case, and I always felt you know, knowing about Mumia's case and knowing about other cases, I always felt a sense of outrage. I don't know that I was certain about what I could do at that time, um, but I think really um, interacting with Eddie and, and saying that, you know, part of the reason that some of us feel so compelled to do the work is because of people like Eddie, the sacrifices that they made for, you know, us. Um, you know, I just feel strongly that he's somebody who should be out, this man should be out teaching in a university, you know. Um, you know, even though he's teaching inside and working with young men and, and doing his part, but it's just, it's really outrageous that someone could be held for so long for something that they did not do. And so, is there anything you can tell us about your experience of, you know, interacting with Eddie Conway? Well, it's just like, like interacting with a, a comrade mm -hmm. that you had never lost contact with. Mm -hmm. It's just like you seen him yesterday, and it had been over forty years. Mm -hmm. And even those within, even uh, in the initial start of the forty years when we first met, it was very briefly, mm -hmm. but it was a connecting spirit, mm -hmm. binding thing you know, yeah. there between us uh, as comrades, mm -hmm. and so. It's just uh, 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 like a, a brotherly mm -hmm. com comrade uh, yeah. uh, feeling that. Yeah. Yeah. That's how he described it. Mm -hmm. He was like, a, you're a brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said an older brother. How old is that? 65. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. maybe that's a three year older brother. <laughs> Eddie got into the prison environment, he didn't stop organizing. He continued to organize, and sometimes I think he focused more on helping others than his actual case. You know, uh, he was about working with the young folks. He's continued to work with young folks inside. Throughout the time he was incarcerated, he, you know, immediately people saw him as a leader and pulled him into whatever organizing was going on from you know, the attempt to create a prison union uh, amongst the, the workers in the prison to, you know, just everything that has occurred in the Maryland system. He's pretty much been a part of that um, and currently is working. Uh, he has created a program called A Friend of a Friend, which is a mentoring project that works with men in the population. That program now is in four Maryland prisons because it just keeps spreading, you know men will participate, they'll get moved, and then like, want to start up uh, a chapter. It's to the point actually where even some of the prison administrators request this program, you know, because they have to, they're forced to recognize sometimes that there's other folks inside, the, you know, the prisoners inside who have more influence with other prisoners, and they, they also know what needs to be done in terms of working with folks. And his main concern was that you're seeing more and more young people coming in from our communities and they're going back out into the communities and he wanted to really slow that, you know, work with them so that folks are going back out a little bit more whole. How, do, how does Eddie Conway connect with the young women in our communities? It's funny because he's like probably, he's a feminist. Okay. I mean, that's how I would describe Eddie, you know. Um, probably more so than a lot of women in terms of his perspective. So he, uh, and a lot of his supporters are young women. His view of mentoring is not exclusive to like him being the elder, and yeah. you know. So I think he gets as much out of it. But he's unique in a prison environment, though, too, because it's a very everything that occurs outside is is like magnified in there. So it's a very sexist environment. Eddie Conway, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. He's um, up for a parole hearing in mm -hmm. November first, right? Yeah. So what are your feelings around that and, you know, what is like your sort of message to folks, not only in Maryland, but across the United States in terms of helping, you know, Eddie get out of prison? 
Well, one, he needs letters of support, definitely. But the um, other issue is that should he be denied parole, I think it's time to ask for some uh, accountability. A man who's been in prison for 41 years, who's completed every possible program, who's started programs that, that have gone through the system and other prisoners benefit from, who's furthered his education, um, you know, who is 65 years old. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I think that it's time to amp it up, and if they don't grant them parole, everybody needs to be engaged in confronting them and asking why.